things up, and then I'll just be a minute or so while I'm looking for something to talk about. We can hop right into it. Alright, so I like that you're sucking decently early, um, maybe it could be like kind of the first thing you're looking for or so, um, just using it early is usually a good idea so you can get get a lot of health going at the start. Yeah, then we kind of get boosted on by the D.Va. Okay, um, good idea trying to shield. The main issue is that we just kind of pl push a little far forward. Um, primarily away from cover, we end up kind of walking very far onto the open. We'll go over cover usage kind of maybe in a minute or so if it if it keeps coming up. But um, there we end up dying just because we walked forwards a little far and um, without without large reason to and then that that just means that they end up punishing us for it um mm -hmm. want, want to look to like as, as sigma a lot of times want to keep just our distance until we have a reason to push right so here when you see like four people grouped up like that um there's probably a lot of damage coming through this tiny little corridor right here right mm -hmm. um great opportunity just to, like walk forwards and and hold your um, your grasp, right? Because then you t you soak up a lot of damage. Soaking up a lot of damage really early on means that you can get a lot of shield health, and then getting all that that health on your health bar means that you can play a little bit extra aggro. You have extra um, ability to do things. So it's just a great way to start every fight. Um, that's probably a good spot to go for it. So just like right here, eating it all up. Um, nice kill. <laughs> Uh-oh. Alright. Yeah. So here, <laughs> sucking back the shield a little, little slow, and then, um... End up uh, just probably could easily just run around the corner, but we I think we're trying to save Mercy maybe, but you know I yeah I was trying to I was trying to shield, but it was too late. Like I, yeah. it was my all was on cooldown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So here, just run around the corner, and then like, you can be around the corner and still be shielding the Mercy. Um, so cover, and then also of course just the the late shielding uh or late callback of the shield is the main issue. Hmm. Uh -oh. taking a lot lot of damage there um just gotta be be a bit careful about putting herself kind of in line of sight of their whole team because here um there's bashan and anna kind of shooting at us from the side we kind of walk out into the open and end up taking a lot of damage so why don't we talk about cover usage real quick um because that's gonna be usually a really important thing to to go over and make sure it's out, where it's out of the way because it's kind of foundational all righty so when it comes to your positioning, if you are going about your business and your positioning, let's say you're positioning like up here, right? And you're standing here and the enemy team is, is shooting at you and this is their entire team there and they're looking at you and they're trying to shred through you. Um, it's going to take about one, two, three seconds to get behind cover, right? Mm -hmm. um, and now that you're behind cover, you can do largely the same amount of stuff. Pretty much all the same stuff from here, except for in that time it took you to walk here, you ended up dying because it is just way too long. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas if you are right here, it takes you half a second to duck behind cover. Boop, can't see me. And now, therefore, um, you good positioning is the usage of cover and bad positioning is the absence of cover. The further away you stray from cover because cover just blocks all the damage, right? You can't... T t not going to take anything from behind it. And the great thing is the cover's all over the place. You have slopes like oh, that you're taking um, when you're people, you know, shooting abilities, ultimates. You have random 
cap string. All over the place. All right, high grounds also act as natural cover. We'll maybe get to high ground uh, at some point. Um, maybe may, we'll, we'll see. Maybe defense will come up a little bit more. Um, but just using cover is going to be doing wonders for you. Um, playing off corners and things like that with like a character like Sigma as well. You get to use put your shield on the corner, and that means that um, now less shield is visible, which means that they can't shred it as easily. Um, it's going to mm. stay up longer. Um, additionally, if you're positioned here, the the other thing to keep in mind as a tank, um, as the tank, you have the most um, dictation over where your team is going to be standing out of any player on your team. So if we're standing smack dab in the middle of the open here, our whole team's going to be lining up behind us, and then our shield goes down, and now our whole team's out in the open. Um, but if you're positioning over on cover, right, now that encourages our team to follow the shield, and they all come over here and huddle up near the corner, and now if the shield goes down, we're all right here and have easy availability for cover, right? So it's not just your own positioning, but it's encouraging your team to position, and it's going to keep you alive, make you take a lot less damage, and all of that sort of, all, all, all that making sense? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool, cool, cool. I think that's it for the moment um i mean since we're here we i haven't seen you ult yet but common common like ult a uh, sigma um is your what when you pull them up you're gonna have one volley up in the air one volley on the ground so usually usually you're able to kill two people by yourself um unless people are low or somebody else is helping you so we can look at something like this okay one volley in the air one volley on the ground uh when they kind of get stunned mm -hmm. Traveling to Dorado. Ready for battle. Right, a little head. So you can see it's like right here. So notice how when we're fighting the diva, um, preferably we could probably just be doing all the same stuff and shooting her, but from this angle where now the Ana and Bastion can't see you, right? Um, so just looking to shoot from cover here is going to do wonders and keeping you alive. And then we had, saw like that other scenario as well where pushing forwards ended up getting us killed. So it's kind of like two scenarios where he gets, gets, uh, gets us killed. And that's one of the things that can cause deaths a lot of times is, is um, po poor, poor cover usage. Okay. Right. So, firstly, it seemed seeming like you not not really noticing the bastion over in the corner. So that'd be a bit of visual and audio awareness. So visual because you can see him out on the corner of your eye here. Um, audio because you can kind of hear where he's ulting from and the fact that he is walking next to you. You can hear him. You can hear him transform. You can see him shooting at you, like right here, kind of big on your screen. So a lot of kind of visual indicators that bastions here shooting at you. Um, probably be an easy opportunity just to like, you know, maybe do a grasp, eat up a lot of passion shots, um, potentially shoot at him, right? Since he's so far forwards, he's probably gonna be the easiest to shoot at, um, that sort of thing. So a bit, a bit of audio and visual awareness, knowing the passions there, um, beyond that during some of these fights, um, it seems like we end up kind of going around and we end up just kind of tickling everybody like we kind of swap from target to target to target to target to target um and uh, just be careful with that because when you tickle everybody then nobody dies but when you try to focus on a target then you end up kind of whittling them down and you actually get the kill so usually the only two times that you should be swapping targets is a if you find a better target or b you lose your target so like they get away or they're you know they were low hp and now they're full hp that sort of thing um so if there's better if, if better opportunities arise is, is usually the idea mm. okay 
nice flux. Now Reaper blossomed uh, pretty much on top of it, but good. I, I think we got a people, few people in it before Reaper even... Yeah, I think that's two people if Reaper doesn't kill them all. Okay, very nice. Um, we're going to watch rocks because rock is a lot of times going to be your big combo where if you land it you're going to be able to follow up super easily because you know they get stunned here end up kind of not being able to follow up on the rock um we'll, we'll keep an eye on it to see if you're following up on it consistently So let's discuss target priority real quick. So this has come up like maybe very minorly, but here, I mean, it's pretty, it's, it comes up as a thing. Um, and the idea behind target priority is basically um, the, the, the priority targets are going to be the targets who you can kill the easiest in a lot of cases. Now there's some other variables like, um, like value on targets is another thing that can come up, but the usually easiest targets to kill are are the priority targets because they're the things that will actually die um and tanks by design are the hardest things to kill in the game they have two to three times the health of other characters they ha have armor shields tanking abilities uh they are e able to be healed to the easiest so they're by design designed to be difficult um and then therefore not it's not to say that you never shoot at them but you probably shouldn't be shooting at them when you have other better options to shoot at um when you can shoot at tanks would be like if the tank is low so like now now if diva is low hp here feel free to shoot at her um if they're out of position if they're the only thing that you can actually like at, the only thing you can shoot at go for it um but if we're coming back 10 seconds to right here where you have a diva who if you look at the top left here is full hp and a kiriko who is right next to her um, who just used TP and, uh, I don't know if she used, uh, look, I don't think she, no, she used her ultimate there. Um, who do you think is going to be the easier one to finish off? Well, like you said, and, well, D.Va has three times the health, so, I mean, obviously the Kiriko for sure. Yeah, so, Kiriko, definitely going to, um be much much easier so I, i'd go for it on on kiriko um and then go for the diva after that and the, then you know the kiriko can if, if we just kind of leave her then she just heals diva up and then diva stays alive longer too so it just kind of cuts off the healing gets her out of the way and then we can focus on diva afterwards um is the idea behind it and then even among the squishy targets um there's still going to kind of be a hierarchy of who's easiest to who's hardest to kill and usually you can kind of come up with one in your head um what the hierarchy is like if i was looking at your team composition on your team i would go okay easiest to hardest i'd probably say hanzo's the easiest to kill followed by possibly um quite honestly maybe the other maybe it's a mercy next and then kiriko and reaper and then sigma so like uh, i'd say maybe in that order roughly speaking um so well, if if you were to put in order your team combo what what would you kind of put that at um like sorry what do you mean what yeah you mean so easy put put your team com oh, oh sorry the enemy team composition so enemy team composition top uh, top left team one um if you were to put them in order of easiest to hardest to kill what would that be order be um, for me, it would be probably Soldier, and then, um, Anna, Kiriko, and Bastion, and Diva. Mm hmm yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, I think Anna and Soldier may depend on, like, kind of position to you and things like that. Like, I think Soldier technically is a little bit harder to kill because, um, kind of, I guess, depending on the matchup, um, Soldier just having speed, like, in mobility and... Anna doesn't have the same mobility, but Anna does have sleep, so I think it kind of depends on the matchup there. Um, is she actually going to land the sleep or not? Um, sort of thing. So I think I think they're about evenish, or so. And sometimes you can even put them, you know, say that they're kind of in in the same tier, right? They're they're it's just mm -hmm. Anna and Soldier. Um, yeah. Alrighty. So everything there making sense? No questions so far. 
No, yeah, no questions. So, yeah, we can probably kill, end up killing both of them, if that's the case. Uh-oh, we hit the rock and we look away. Note that you can drop your shield while grasping. That's something you can do. And a lot of times if you're grasping, you don't want to overlap shield with it. Because um, then that kind of means that you're using two defensive abilities at the exact same time when you could kind of rotate them in and out of each other. Um, so mm -hmm. if you're using grasp, a lot of times you kind of just drop you drop your shield. And I think it's a great t great timing for grasp. But a great, good idea. Um, just probably can drop our shield so we can use it after. So we can replace it too on the soldier. Okay. Probably would have been a perfect time for ults, like right around here as soon as we land that rock. Notice how like all four of them are clumped up in a tiny little ball. Um, mm -hmm. Usually when you're ulting, I mean like be best timing for your ultimate is like when they're all clumped up. Because then you don't have to wait for them to re-clump up. And if we're ulting and they're not clumped up, you don't want to expect them to kind of all group up after we ult. <laughs> so um, instead, we want to wait for time so they are clumped up. And that's that was a kind of great opportunity for it. Now they're all spread out again. Oh, watch standing underneath it. <laughs> Possibly rock as well. Use, use accretion to stun her out of it. Once again, all kind of grouped up. Maybe another great opportunity for your ult. There you go. Probably the health. I think sometimes, um, like just make sure, make sure you're watching health bar. I think we've seen a couple instances where like, um, we're rocking like after the person's dead, or here rocking when she's one HP, and then if we're rocking when she's one HP, um, can just end up meleeing her. Um, each tick bar here is twenty five HP, and melee does thirty. So just meleeing here finishes her off, um, and then that way we don't have to kind of waste a whole ability. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk mechanics for a minute. So, um, firstly, noting like things like the kind of ticks like this, I'm kind of picking up. So, watch how we go shot, shot, and then look away. And then we go shot, oh, shot, shot. Oh, did I skip too far ahead? Whoopsie. I think we did it like twice here. Okay, so we go shot, shot, look to the left. Shot, shot, look to the left. All right, shot, shot, look to the left. Um, so watch for ticks like that because that's just unnecessarily meaning that now you have to re after shooting you're readjusting to your target and the further away you're having to readjust from the further your crosshair is having to travel the more difficult the shot's gonna be right because it has to go further and whatnot so yeah. in this situation just keep your crosshair in the same place and then your shots are going to be much much easier on yourself so along the same strain of thought um is kind of the idea of flicking so the idea of flicking i've seen I, I think sometimes your your um, aim stock can be a little bit flicky, um, and uh, flicking is just any time your crosshair needs to go from point A to point B very, very quickly, and 
Um, flaking is not a bad thing, and it's also, but it's also at the same time not used in every cir single circumstance. Um, and like I said before, it's used. It should be used when your crosshair needs to travel somewhere fast, and your crosshair doesn't always need to travel somewhere fast so times where flicking is needed um would be like if you're up against a fast moving target so let's say like a tracer's blinking around you uh you can't really track that too well so you're going to have to flick to keep up with a tracer who's blinking around uh let's say someone sneaks up behind you you have to flick to do a 180 on them um let's say you're reacquiring a new target so we flick over to the soldier Right, or we flick up to the high ground. Right, those are circumstances where flicking is perfectly fine because you're traveling from point A to point B quickly. Now, what happens if we have a baby diva who doesn't have any mobility, who's in front of us? It, flicking in that circumstance now can possibly just even throw off your shots and make it so that you're not aiming at the target um, when you could be aiming at the target. Um, mm -hmm. Now, so, sometimes you can do kind of more like micro flicks, but if you're doing any flicking at all it should be tiny at that at that point when there's not much movement involved and you're already looking at them. That that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other than that, I kind of have like two more touch points here with mechanics. Um, firstly, what is your like sensitivity in DPI at? Um, I'm in game. I can check that right now. Sure. Uh, let's see. Sensitivity. My DPI it's a, a thousand, mm -hmm. and my sensitivity uh, it's at fifteen percent. Okay, so um, if you do so, if you take that so one thousand and then you multiply it by fifteen, which is your eDPI, it's your sensitivity by multiplied by DPI, um, which is just kind of find them what they are combined. Um, that brings you to fifteen thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Um. For reference on what kind of sensitivity that would be, um, this is just using like my own, which I would say like from I back in the day I looked at like a bunch of you know what what do um what what kind of our average sensitivities and whatnot th things like that. My sensitivity I'd say is about like an averagely low sensitivity. Like it's it's a low sensitivity. It's not insanely low. It's not it's it's not like on the higher end of low. It's it's about a medium low. Um. My sensitivity is uh, 4.5 times 800, which brings you to 36,000. Oh, sorry, 3,600, right? Mm -hmm. So if we take your sensitivity and just divide those up, um, that basically means that your sensitivity is like four times my sensitivity. So it just, once again, for reference, cross my mouse pad and do one full 360 uh that means that you're doing four entire full 360s mm -hmm. right which is is pretty 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 a lot pretty much, it's a lot <laughs> right mm -hmm. um yeah. that can make that can make it hard to control when you're turning that fast um so i may recommend trying to like lower that a little bit um because that's definitely a high sensitivity um i'd say usually like um, up until like 4,000 or like 5,000, that's, uh, maybe like 5,000, five, uh, up until like four or 5,000, that's like a low sensitivity, then like 5,000 to like 10,000 or something, somewhere within that range is a medium. And then once you get like past that range, once you, once you pass like eight to 10,000, then that's a high sensitivity. So you're in the high end of sensitivities, not the worst. I've, I've seen people who are at like 50,000 and it's like, how are you even, um, <laughs> At the same time, might want to consider lowering it because then that can give you a bit more accuracy. Um, if you do the as a baseline, um, though, your entire like wh whatever you're using for your area for for your mouse pad, right? So if it's a desk wise desk wide mouse pad, whatever portion you're actually using, from left to right, one full three sixty. Uh, because that means if you're starting in the middle, either way you go, you can do a 180, right? Um, so that should be your minimum to work with. And then I just mess around with it, see what works with you. Um, don't expect it to feel fantastic on day one if you're lower, if you're like having or even like you know, uh, uh, 
going with a third or a fourth of your DPI. Don't expect it to feel th fantastic on day one because you kind of have to adjust to it. Um, yeah. But if it's not feeling great on, you know, after a couple of days with it, then potentially try something different. Um, that sort of thing, that idea. Or if you're playing eight hours straight, maybe after try it for a couple hours sort of thing. Um, <laughs> then final, wait, I one more thing. I was going to say on sensitivity. Um, oh, what was I going to say in sensitivities? I feel like I forgot. Um, alrighty. And then I guess last thing until I kind of remember that, what I was going to say uh, on that. Um, last thing I was going to say is kind of consistency on... Um, oh, sorry. I was going to say mouse, uh, mouse pad size. If you have a small mouse pad, you can't really go too low with your sensitivity. Um, do you, what, what kind of size mouse pad do you have? You have small, medium, um, large? I don't, uh, play on the mouse pad. Uh, okay. That's so something I else cannot... I can help. Yeah. Yeah, better, better, they provide much better traction as well. Um, so yeah. it's, it might be a little bit less, like, skippy or things like that. So, um, when you, when you end up work getting a mouse pad, so you can get them, like, pretty cheap. Like, you can get, like, literally you can get a desk-wide mouse pad for, like, 20 bucks. Um, mm -hmm. so it, even if you, like, you don't, and you don't need to get one that large and that's like ones that have, that look cool. Like you can probably get one, um, that's like, you know, decently medium, large size and just try working with that. That's just an idea to throw out there. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Um, can, let's talk consistency for a minute. So, um, firstly, when you go and play comp, um, do you typically warm up before you play? Um, yeah, I try to, I try to play like a quick, uh, quick play and then just, gotcha. just, uh, I, I play a match and I just hop on the discord and try to get people. Sure. So, play with. gotcha, gotcha. So that's a good idea to warm up. Um, but let's talk about like wh how, like what is warming up. So when you warm up, um, the pur purpose behind warming up is generally aim related because that's the fastest thing that's deteriorating with your skill set. You're not going to get on tomorrow and forget how to use your abilities. Um, maybe if you go a week or two, or you know, then you, you might need a little bit of a re refresher. Um, but, the fa but you will get on tomorrow and your aim will be deteriorating because that's how fast your muscle memory will fade. So mm -hmm. the warm-up is... Um, and therefore, it's largely a warm up should be usually largely aim related, um, and therefore best warm ups usually are high aim intensive game modes. Um, now, quick play, though it's definitely better than nothing, isn't very much like a high aim intensive game mode um, because you're going to be distracted by all of the abilities and the teammates and the objectives to worry about. Um, whereas if you do something, for example, like a try hard free for all, um, in that environment, you don't need to worry about any of those other things. It's just you and your mechanics of shooting at people and then your duels and learning how to duel people. Um, mm -hmm. so that is, and then it's also much more uh, intensive. So things are happening constantly or constantly fighting. Whereas in a quick play, you're going to have in between the round and you're going to have, um, while you're loading in and you're going to have, um, in between fights, whereas there's not really in between fights in like a tried free for all, um, other it, options you can kind of i usually like mix it up with what i'm doing what i'm doing but you can do um you you can find a lot of these in like almost all the time in like custom games you can find try hard free for all you can find aim arena uh 1v1 arena um you can potentially do like in game or out of game aim trainers you can find um and then quick play not like too bad of an option but i'd maybe reserve quick play for like if you haven't played the game in a little bit um is maybe where, where that would come into play mm -hmm. um makes sense yeah yeah um then on top of that because your aim deteriorates so quickly um my other recommendation now this is of course just a recommendation um it would just be to play consistently it will it's going to be better for you um to get in just like even if 
at a very minimum, let's say you just get in like a 10 to, because all, all your warm up needs is like um, 10, 15 minutes. That's about it, right? If you get in like 10, 15 minutes a day on just messing around and aim training, um, that's going to keep your aim much fresher than if you're playing eight hours on two days of week. Um, but of course, life stuff happens. If you don't have the opportunity for it, then don't sweat it. Life comes before video games. But that's just my recommendation. If you're able to, then keep it consistent and try to, you know, get on to play a warm up um, or even a, you know, a game a day or something like that, so that you're keeping fresher. Um, and then that can help keep aim much more consistent and get pra more practice in as well. Um, so that, that might be another recommendation. But once again, kind of take it or leave it, depending on what work and life and social life all say about it <laughs> yeah right um i think that's about it for the current moment so summary on on mechanics um watch looking away after shots which is kind of like unnecessary flicking watch on un watch unnecessary flicking and times where you can flick and when you shouldn't be flicking um and just stay on target um m investing in mousepad potentially um potentially lowering sensitivity and trying to mess around with that. Um, and then warming up high aim intensive modes and just trying to keep consistent if at all possible. Yep, so once again, I noticed that like the um, how we're kind of hard locking on the diva when there's a, a Ana like right next to us, right? So Ana's mm -hmm. much much better. I mean, like maybe you can maybe make an argument like when Diva is like the in front of us here and kind of overextended as she kind of runs into your team. But then even here, Soldier on your right side is probably the better option um, because Soldier's much more exposed and you can definitely shred him faster than the diva. Um, then after that, then Ana still fantastic target. Um, you'll notice that like when you swap up your targets, you're just gonna start to shred things a lot quicker, right? Things are just gonna die. A lot more kills, a lot more damage. Notice the flicking, like just looking to the side real quick again. So we go shot, shot, look, shot, look. Shot look now if you are maybe in the habit of that from like trying to watch flanks mm -hmm. i could see that as like being where habit comes from but when it comes to watching flanks like for example like um like first i would say team composition dictates play style right if they are on playing different characters you should be you should be approaching it differently right so you got to pay attention to what are we running what are they running because that dictates a lot about your gameplay um are they on any flanky characters i mean i mean i don't know if you would consider junk a flaky character but not really yeah i'd say like possibly like a sol soldier possibly possibly junk possibly kiriko maybe like the once in a maybe once in a while for a couple of their characters right um that sort of thing uh, i wouldn't say that like any of them would frequently want to be like dropping behind you here unless maybe like soldiers visoring or something i would i wouldn't say many of them would want to do that um but let's say they're on like a Genji or Reaper or Tracer, then maybe you have a bit more reason to be checking your backline, right? But then the other thing is that even let's say they have a Genji, do you need to be constantly flicking your head back and forth? No, not necessarily. Um, you have kind of two other two ways you can kind of go about it. Firstly, is kind of pay attention to screen, right? Um, if we and i can see the other four players on my screen that means i can I, ha I can keep track of all five players on my screen right now i know where all five of them are ones in spawn four four on my screen right here right um and then if there you ever are in a situation where you um are like huh the 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 Genji is, seems to be missing, or huh, the Junkrat seems to be missing. This is a common one, for example, like with Faras. Like Faras looking for Barrage. Um, 
most of the time, she's going to be spamming you like the entire game. And then if she suddenly goes silent and no is nowhere to be seen and you know that she's alive, she's probably looking for Barrage, right? Mm -hmm. um that that's like a tell right that you can kind of go with because that's how i you know as a far player that's how i went about it right um now if you notice that like the junk rat's missing somewhere and then you can start maybe glancing back once in a while you kind of look around for him you can also keep just keep your ears open and listen for him right and, and just and just watch forwards while you keep your ear out for the flank that's something you could potentially do as well so lots of different things that we can go about it um not really likely that someone drops behind us here and then even even if they were running a bit more of a flanky in comp um i would just keep your ears open for the back line listen like is there a genji on my mercy behind me um which you can usually do with your ears and not have to be turning around every two seconds mm -hmm. Soak up all that damage. Um, easy, easy health. Good shield. Okay. Great ult. I like it. Flux is honestly not too shabby. Unfortunately, missed those, those. Possibly can. Yep, there you go. You got him. Okay. A pro. Uh, there. Once again, maybe like a bit of an audio awareness thing. Now, um, you, you got a bunch of sessions, so we're going to just kind of go in depth on everything because there's no reason not to go in depth on everything when we have so much time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so why don't we go in depth on audio awareness real quick? Because it didn't really seem like you noticed like the tire there, um, mm -hmm. right? So noticing tire means you should probably like look and, and shoot at it so that it doesn't kill our teammates and potentially should be looking to like shield it and things like that, right? Rocket, that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. so let's look at, at sounds real quick for a second. Um, firstly, re regular volume, um, usually ha make sure this is just loud enough. It's very subjective because everybody has different s headset and system sound volume. Um, so we just make sure it's loud enough to where you can hear things. Music volume should be low or off, um, because that can clutter with audio. Um, make sure that you have... Uh, um, surround sound enabled for your headset and if it's not an option for your headset then there's the in-game option spatial audio system settings you swap it to dolby atmos for headphones um, and that's the in-game version of it um, and then on top of that you can need uh, th this is just kind of like a bonus um, feature um, if you don't already have it enabled you can turn on play sound when enemy and teammates are eliminated this is basically like an auditory version of kill feed that will play for you um, mm. so if somebody dies, it kind of gives you a ping, ping sound, and it will differ in, in pitch uh, and tone depending on how many people die and which team they're on. Um, also it, for just a c ease of comfortability, you can turn, t turn sound off on background. If you ever like are putting the game, you know, alt, alt tabbing or on a different monitor or stuff like that. Um, other minor sensitive like uh control things um gameplay you can it enable at the bottom here enable high precision mouse input which you can turn on um which kind of get, detects like to simple really simplify it um it kind of picks up and detects more ticks from your mouse um but if it ends i mean if you end up getting a lag from it or whatever just feel free to turn it off um do, do, do. then accessibility if you haven't already you can uh, reduce and turn off camera shake and hug shake um wait, i don't know what menu what i don't know if uh reduce menu movement does anything i'm not sure which menu that's talking about 
Um, but yeah, you can turn off those, and that's going to keep your screen a little bit less shaky, um, a little bit less to look at. You said for a camera shake, you usually recommend to have that to reduce? Yeah, just there's a bit less uh, less movement on your screen, um, able to pay attention a bit better. <laughs> Not for sure. Oh, yep. So, um, all of that. Sorry, I didn't kind of summarize here. Um, you can have all those settings be pretty fine, but still have bad audio awareness if you're not actually paying attention. So you got to make sure that you're paying attention to footsteps and gunshots and abilities and ultimates. And then that's how you actually have good audio awareness um, is by listening for them. And you'll kind of get used to it as you go along, but then you also want to kind of intentionally listen for it. Um... Why don't we talk real quick before we kind of before we get to any wrap up or anything um, about application? How do you put this stuff into action? Because you're going to want to um, you know put all these things that we're talking about into play, um, and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to. Um, so first thing is like um, is that while you're playing, you want to make sure that you're actively focusing on the thing you're trying to work on. That means that you're not autopiloting, you're not just playing to play, and contrary to popular belief, you're not purely playing to win, because then you just kind of stagnate, um, but you're playing to improve, because that ends up actually leading to more wins. So what that will actually look like within your game is you're going to pick something out. So let's say, for example, um, I don't know, we've talked about, just say positioning. We talked about positioning a little bit. Um, you pick out positioning, you're going to intently focus on it, and, and you'll do this while you're playing, where you'll come into the game and you'll think, positioning, 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 cover, 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 and when you do that, well, now you're probably going to use a bit more cover than if you didn't, because now you're thinking about it, right? It's on your mind, so you'll probably do it a lot more. And then that will make it better, your your gameplay better. When you do that for a long enough period of time, it will form it as a habit. And then once it forms as a habit, then you can kind of move on and you don't really need to focus on it as much. It just comes naturally at that point. Um, and then final thing would just be don't try to do everything all at the same time. That can just be a bit overwhelming. Um, instead, focus on one category of things or one to three smaller things within a category, usually. Um, yeah, though you you can focus on different things if they're kind of disconnected. So, like, um, for example, how like if you were to give an approximate estimate, doesn't have to be exact. How frequently throughout your game are you positioning somewhere? Uh, like positioning, like what do you what do you mean by exact what positioning somewhere? Stand. How often are you standing somewhere special, or st standing somewhere? You know, because that's what positioning is. Positioning is standing somewhere. Um, I mean, I'm usually not, I try not to stand somewhere unless I, there's like a corner I can play. I try to play that corner, especially if mm -hmm. it's like next to a payload. But, um, but I try not to stand. I try to, I try to always move. Okay. Well, you're moving from one spot to the next spot. So how many, like how often throughout a game are you moving from one spot to the next spot? I mean, I'm pretty like a lot. You know, you're not yeah. staying yeah. at one spot. You're moving if we're, yeah. Lot. If we're generalizing it, the answer that I'm looking for is just, all the time you're you're po you're positioning throughout your gameplay literally from start to finish there's not a time in your game that you're not positioning because you're constantly either standing somewhere or moving to stand somewhere else right mm -hmm. um how about something like mechanics how often are you shooting at things throughout your game oh like all the time all the time right now how often throughout so therefore right those two things not going to work out for you if you're trying to overlap if you're trying to work on both of those things at the exact same time that might be a little bit much because both of them are happening all at the same time constantly throughout your game now what about something like ult usage how often are you using your ultimate through the game i mean it's, it's like just depends it, dep it honestly that there's just mm -hmm. depends like usually i feel like you don't want to use it as soon as you get it and you also obviously want to have like a strategy of you know when's the right time to use it so but either so it just depends because some people like likes to use it once as soon as they get it and some people like i mean the only issue i feel like with holding on to it is that you get the habit of holding on to it and just not using it which is not good 
Mm, yeah. So, I mean, like, gen- generally, let's, let, like, firstly, I, I would um, interject that, like, I think usually the best, depending on if, on what ultimate you're using. Now, some ultimates are, like, more defensive, um, but mm-hmm. generally speaking, you don't want to hold on to it because, you know, if you do hold on to it, then you just don't get as much value. Um, generally speaking, um, the more ultimates you get out, the more value you get. Now, of course, you shouldn't be ulting if you've already won the fight or lost the fight. Or you have, like, a valid reason not to use it. But if you have your ultimate, and the fight's happening, and there's no reason not to use your ultimate, you should probably be using it. Because then it gets you value, and you can end up winning, and then you get more ultimates. Um, so I would say usually use it as soon as you get like it. Not just don't haphazardly use it. Have a plan. But think about how you're going to use it. Like, twenty. You know, let's say you're, like, 80% to your ult. Um, think about how you're using it. 80% away from your, or, or when you're like 20% away or 10% away or 5% away. Think about how you're using it beforehand. That way you can use it as you get it. And then that way you get more ultimates out faster. Now, of course, like, like I said before, if you are at 100% and you have it and you see, oh, I might not need it because we are up a bunch of people. Um, or I know that my, I, my, our teammates, like they have no ultimates and our team has five ultimates, right? That's a situation where maybe, you know, you have valid reason to maybe not use it. But if there's no reason not to use it, then just use it because then you're going to get value out of it. Um, Mm -hmm. And if you do, let's say you did use it off of cooldown just every time you get it, that's still only going to be like once every like minute or two. It's it's not happening that frequently. And if you do use it, it's usually you're using it for like 10 to 20 seconds. So it's not happening all the time. So therefore, that's something you could theoretically work on at the same time as something else, because it's not as much, it's not overlapping as much. So you could work on ult usage and positioning, per se. Because mm-hmm. then cause then you spend 80% of your game on positioning, and then the 20% that you're ulting, you focus on ulting. Um, so just think through things like that. Um, once again, don't try to, to make it too, too much. But um, do just think about, uh, you know, what, what, what could you be working on? All, all that mm-hmm. concept makes sense? Yeah. Alrighty. So, let's get o- cut over here for a minute. Um, so, let's start to do our wrap-up review, kind of go over main points for the session. Um, abilities. Um, grasp. Use a bit earlier on in the fight. Kind of the same concept of, like, if you use it as you're entering the fight, have more grasps during the fight. Because it, it goes on the cooldown, and then maybe you get two or three into the fight, rather than one or two. Um... <laughs> Then on top of that, it starts you off with a lot of health at the start of the fight. Um, looked when you are using it. A lot of times I've noticed like you'd grab. Walk in further into their face and then maybe back off after the grass is about to run out. But like if, if I'm trying to like eat up, you know, this person's damage here, um, I'm not going to on the. But uh, I, I'd say just be be mindful that you can sometimes play a bit more aggressive when you're using grass. Um, rock. Think about kind of the follow up. Um, sometimes I feel like we'd hit rock and then we wouldn't follow up, but it's a very easy um, one tap combo um, when you're using it correctly. So look to use it like that. Um, shield. Honestly, it wasn't too shabby. I think a lot, a lot of times we kind of leave it up and then forget about it, and then we take it down too late. So just be careful of that. Drop it every time it's not doing anything. Um, then besides that, put it on corners, and um, I think that's mainly it. We can possibly go over more things in the future um, with, with shielding, but I don't think it really came up too much during the session. Um, let's see what else is there. Um... I think of overall abilities, uh, like low to medium priority for you to work on. You know, some stuff, not not the biggest stuff though. Um, all usage, honestly, pretty solid, right? I think sometimes maybe like, um, you know, could have gotten one or two extra people in it. Maybe sometime, you know, could have popped like a hair earlier. Um, maybe could have used it when they're more grouped up. Potential. Possibly could have hit like one or two more shots, like on the up and down. But yeah. overall fairly solid right like not not too many issues with it you usually got a decent amount of people you usually had some pretty good timing with it um 
overall probably less to work on than your abilities so i'd say like a you know low to low to medium like it's it's it's, it's on the lower end of things uh for you to work on um then next comes your mechanics mechanics um a lot of things right like kind of like a lot of here and there things um watch the habit of going shot shot right you watch that because you have to readjust every time watch flicking if we're kind of already aiming at the target so we don't want to kind of like do this stuff right um when we could just kind of stay on top of them um high sensitivity potentially try out lower a bit of a lower one um see how things go um then uh, mouse pad right and uh warm up 10 15 minutes in high aim intensive mode and if you ever if you get the chance you know try to make it a consistent thing um you know maybe maybe once a day 10 minutes sort of thing um in, <laughs> if you're able to um and target priority is another thing right target priority who are you looking at who are you shooting at a lot of times kind of got sucked up in diva um and shooting at diva when we could be on easier targets um and that just means they can get a lot more kills um and we're swapping that up um so swap that up to the easier targets kind of come up with that list in your head of who's easiest to who's hardest um and then do look at the harder things if they're low out of position or if they're the only thing you can shoot um i.e the the you know, way, other way other way to say that is the hard thing has made themselves easy um or you don't have another choice is kind of the idea behind that Overall, that's a lot more things. Um, p uh, mechanics, probably like a higher end of a medium. Well, let's say, let's put it there. I think it's a lot of, I don't think it's, your, your aim, even, with all that being said, I, your aim wasn't the atrocious. Like, it wasn't terrible. It's not going to be, like, yeah. Like, I, I wouldn't say it was, it was terrible. There were just some inconsistencies with it that can probably be ironed out uh, um, pretty easily. Um, that sort of thing. So, just... Uh, higher end of a medium to work on then next comes positioning positioning um cover usage primarily right make sure you're using cover good positioning is the usage of cover bad positioning is the absence of cover um as sigma you have a range of let's see what is it uh 25 meters i think no 20 like two or so and that's you're not really doing too much from this one so it's like that's like 23 cap but then to hit direct shot it's like 22 or so mm -hmm play within that um sometimes though like it kind of be like up here on people um and sometimes there's just other characters that do that better than you right so think reinhardt um think reinhardt think reaper think junkrat and roadhog like you know think, think like characters other characters do close range better than you um even think diva from this range diva's doing no damage at all so why, if you're in a 1v1 against D.Va, why would we come and play up at this range when D.Va, now we're just, we can do the same damage this whole way, and then now we're letting her do zero damage, and then now max damage, right? Mm -hmm. um, overall, though, kind of medium priority for you to work on. Maybe more will come up in future sessions. Uh, we didn't really see it um, in, that, in, in our limited time here. Um, and then finally comes down to awareness, awareness, pay attention to where is your team at, where is the enemy team at, um, sometimes, you know, just what I notice, like, you know, the Bastion sitting off in turret form in the corner there, um, kind of noticing where people are, pay attention to their health bars, so we're not, someone's not, like, 1 HP and we're, um, and we're using our rock to finish them off, um, watch kind of the flow of the fight and what's happening and that i think that's honestly it's just kind of a lot of other odds and ends i don't think that there was like an insane amount audio awareness right keep your ears open listen there are a couple th situations where you didn't hear things keep your ear open for the top don't crack tire and things like that overall that one you know media maybe like like a bit it, it kind of i probably put in between um the mechanics and uh, positioning. So to put it all in order, number one is going to be mechanics, kind of figuring out all those tiny little things. Number two is going to be um, your awareness. Number three, and actually, you know what? 
uh, uh, just because of ease of simplicity, um, awareness had a couple things, and the positioning only really had the one, and that was just cover usage. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put cover usage as number two, right? E easier thing to work on. Um, it's not. It's a little bit more centralized, and that's also a pretty important thing as well. Um, so I'm gonna put positioning as number two, number three as awareness, number four as ability usage, and then number five as ult usage with you know a couple tinier things, not not super a, a, a ton though. Um, any questions? Um, no, no questions. No? Okay, sounds good. Um, recording.